May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Sometimes it seems the worse the tragedy, the more abhorrent the theology it elicits. Still numb from the overwhelming evil perpetrated against helpless children and school teachers in Egypt, now we have to read the idiocy from fundamentalists and others who declare the senseless carnage a sign of God's judgment against America. Their words are utterly disgraceful. I find them exploitative and unchristian. They are perverse in the worst sense of that word. Certain Christians seem compelled to speak for God in disorienting moments like these, and the results are frequently terrible, to put it lightly. The rest of the church has a responsibility to be angry and to repudiate those statements. In times like these, I find myself wanting to disavow anyone's attempts to speak on behalf of God Almighty. That might sound strange coming from me, since I'm trained as a theologian and ordained as an Episcopal priest, I usually find myself regularly encouraging people to talk about God and to assess, both critically and creatively, theirs and others' ideas about who God is and how God operates. What disturbs me greatly is when this kind of talk slips into precision or definition, into absolute confidence about God and how God might be or not be connected to our current circumstances. Hence, all of those ridiculous readings that we have from the fundamentalists about strange biblical passages in Ezekiel and Revelation that we've just heard, which is a beautiful, majestic poem, the ridiculous readings we have pinpointing individuals as the Antichrist, the beast, the forerunners, all those ridiculous statements. And to call the violence in the Middle East as judgment on America is the height of self-righteous, self-centered, unchristian dialogue. It's not even dialogue, it's talk. The long history of theology, whether in formal academic settings or around coffee urns at the eight o'clock coffee hour on a Sunday morning, or in online forums reminds me of an ever-present temptation to pretend that a speaker or another source enjoys direct and uncluttered pathways into the mind of God. We need to face the reality that Christians have made horrific mistakes in our statements about God's will and God's ongoing activity in the world. Yet at the same time, 
I cannot read this history as just one-dimensional, for I have seen firsthand and throughout the past people of faith achieving the most positive, peaceful, conciliatory results. Many people who describe themselves as responding to God accomplish great feats of love and conciliation, of compassion and social change. This makes me think of our Blessed Lady, the Virgin Mary. What a different language she talks. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Our Lady, the Mother of Christ, explaining what it means for her to be pregnant with the Son of God. As Advent in the far distance approaches through the liturgical seasons of the Christian year and then concludes with the season of the Incarnation, many Christian liturgies will include the Blessed Virgin Mary's words from St. Luke's Gospel that we've heard this morning, traditionally called the Magnificat. The speech is usually cast as a prayerful song. It is her response to her surprising pregnancy and her extraordinary child. Our Lady's song indulges in a kind of biblical sampling. She recites a few phrases and instead borrows widely from the Holy Scriptures, quoting and linking themes and passages from the Old Testament. In piecing together these long-standing statements about God, she makes fresh, peaceful, conciliatory declarations in connecting these old words to her new circumstances she makes claims about God's activity in the present time. It's bold talk about a God who is capable of upending societies and governments, a God who inverts the usual state of affairs that we see around us. The truly powerful, the truly wealthy, the truly authoritative are not those who wear grey suits and sit around board tables deciding where to deploy missiles, but the truly powerful, the truly righteous, the truly good are those who sing the praises of God and ask the intercessions of Our Lady. Some of us were at Holy Trinity Covina yesterday for the installation of a new image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I was moved to tears as I haven't been in many a long month by the devotion, by the love, by the simple prayer and care that the people of Holy Trinity Covina have for Our Blessed Lady of Guadalupe it made me realize that they are the wealthy ones. They are the truly powerful. They are the ones with authority because they are on God's side and seek peace throughout our world. Simply put, Our Lady offers an example and invitation for speaking boldly about God's activity. In this way, she shows us how to speak about God in the here 
and now in a way that makes sense. Unlike fundamentalism, she recalls established convictions about God's character, and she imagines the possibility of bringing a new future into being, not in a distant time, but beginning now, all around her, in her experience, even within her body. Maybe this is most acceptable from such a central figure in our faith. Our Lady's song might give us pause to listen. The Virgin's song invites us to participate in God's being active among us in new ways that repudiate that corrosive and fear-fed fundamentalism that abstraction that has everyone but a few consigned to hell. And so I end with Our Lady's words. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he promised to our forefathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.